Hello there, Dr. Mintz here. This is an interesting case of a 22-year-old male who had sudden onset of shortness of breath. I'll let you look through these images here. And maybe you've made the diagnosis already, or at least you see the abnormality. But it's important not only to identify the abnormality and diagnosis, but also to understand the anatomy and why the abnormality appears as it does and why that has the effect on the patient that it has. So we do CT pulmonary embolism protocol with these very thin slices to get a large number of slices and therefore fine detail. And here you can see we're still getting through the superior mediastinum, so let's move a little bit faster. And, okay, important to ask yourself the following questions. What are all of these structures? What is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? And what are these? Well, let's start out with this. You have the main pulmonary artery coming back from the right ventricle, you recall. Comes back from the right ventricle, dives under the aortic arch and branches. So the pulmonary artery comes back and divides into right and left main pulmonary artery and it does that under the aortic arch, under the aortic arch and this is the ascending aorta and this is the descending aorta. Over here we have the SVC. Okay, so let's take this to a little lower resolution so it's a little easier to look through like this. Okay, so we start at the top Aortic arch right at the top and the SVC. Follow that down. And you can see you're starting to get under the arch here. Aortic arch, ascending aorta, descending aorta, and the SVC. Ah, the SVC is connecting to something here, it looks like. Aha, uh -huh, that must be the azagous vein. The azagous vein, which courses along the esophagus in the azagoesophageal recess on the right, and then comes up here right over, right above right main stem bronchus connects with the superior vena cava and this is the structure which in an azagous fissure gets hooked over the developing right upper lobe. Ascending aorta, descending aorta. Main pulmonary artery coming to bifurcate into right and left main pulmonary arteries. What is white here is opacified blood with contrast. What is not opacified here should be these are the branching arteries of the left main pulmonary artery, and it is just chock full of this clot. So these darker areas are filling defects within the lumen of the pulmonary arteries, <clears throat> and they are clots. And you'll see that these clots are <clears throat> almost invariably filling defects which are casts from the veins in the legs. So this is actually a cast, like a worm-like structure, because it was formed in the deep venous system of the legs and then moved from there. So these filling defects are causing an impediment to the flow of blood in the pulmonary arteries to the left lung especially, and less so to the right. And that means it's more difficult for the blood to become oxygenated it also means the heart has to work harder and strain to get the blood through the lungs despite the fact that there are all these obstructions. That means it has to push more through smaller areas of the lungs. The lungs that still are perfused have to, to maintain all of the flow that ordinarily would be present. So if we look at it in another projection, you see here. Here is the heart, of course, and here we have the SVC coming down into the right atrium. Why the right atrium? Because it's deoxygenated blood, deoxygenated blood coming back from the body. And likewise, you'll have the IVC here, unopacified, coming into the right atrium with unopacified blood. From the right atrium, it goes into the right ventricle, which is quite far forward. You see that? 
it's more anterior than it is right with respect to the left ventricle because the left ventricle is back here behind it really. So the right ventricle then has this deoxygenated blood which has come into the right side of the heart from the SVC and IVC and it has got to go out to the lungs and the pulmonary artery comes out of the right ventricle and dives backward as I said before to branch to divide under the aortic arch so here's the aortic arch and here you see right main pulmonary artery and then a little farther left main pulmonary artery and you can see very nicely here that they're chock full of clot and look at these blood clots filling almost the entirety of the pulmonary arteries on the left side particularly but with a significant amount of clot also on the right side in these branches. This clot going like this from right to left is also very clearly a cast and it's called uh, a saddle embolus. So you have saddle embolus there going from one side to the other. And despite this, this young man, 22 years or old or so, didn't have a great deal of shortness of breath because with youth you have great healthy lungs that uh, can perform extremely well even with relatively little perfusion. So we'll take a look and see what the lungs themselves look like. Not bad. So despite all of this mayhem in the pulmonary arteries, lungs look pretty good. So a nice example of severe, prominent, large bilateral pulmonary emboli, particularly large on the left. Here we are on the right, and if you go off to the left, in the sagittal plane, you'll see this mass of clot right here left main pulmonary artery going off into the, both the branches of the left main pulmonary artery. That's all.